Hey, this is Matt Reisinger with Reisinger Homes. Welcome to my video blog on green building and building science. I'm here in a new construction house in central Austin, my company's building. This is about a 2,200 uh, square foot home. This is brand new construction, slab on grade. This is an infill lot uh, that my clients actually used to live on this property in an older house that got moved into the hill country. And we just finished the insulation stage and I wanted to show you our insulation strategy on the house. I was just looking up our uh, HERS rating on this house. Uh, we scored a 60. Uh, that's a 0 to a 100 score, where 100 would be a, a house that was built to the 2006 IEC, International Energy Code, which is today's standard uh, code here in Austin. A 0 would be a zero energy house. We don't have any uh, solar electric or solar hot water in this house. We're using tankless hot water heaters, and uh, we're using uh, both gas and heat pump uh, heating and some very, very high efficiency um, air conditioners on this house. So with a 60 score on that HERS rating, we're about 40% more efficient than a standard code built house. Uh, we're really approaching that 50% that more efficient. So this house should be very, very comfortable and very, very energy efficient for my clients. And I wanted to talk briefly about our energy strategy on this house. As you can see, we spray foamed all the walls on the exterior. We've got three and a half inches of spray foam. And uh, really my spray crew, spray cr my spray crew, pardon me, probably gave us more like four and a half or even five inches average depth. One of the nice things about spray foam is that it fully encapsulates uh, and makes a perfect um, seal on every cavity. And when we're using two by six exterior walls like this, uh, we just showed you a second ago that solid blocking on there that's for a, a TV mount. So with that two by six, that triple two by six blocking in a two by six cavity, uh, we still have a full three and a half inches of depth behind their insulation. And with that spray foam, it's real easy to get that perfect fill every time on that. And then if you pan up here and look at the um, look at this band joist area around the house, that's a very, very tricky uh, place to insulate with traditional fiberglass or with a, a blown in blanket system. But with the spray foam, boy, it just does a perfect insulation job every time. You're not dependent on a perfect installer uh, to get a great spray job. And, um, and you're really getting not only the stated R value, but actually even better from this because it's fully uh, air sealing. It's sealing around pipes, sealing around wires, all those penetrations on the outside of the house. Let's come over here to the west wall of the house. I'm going to show you a couple other things. The homeowners lived on this a lot uh, previous, previous to us moving the house and uh, building this new one. And they told us that this western facing wall was really, really hot in the summertime as the sun would come over in the afternoon uh, in, this, in the southern sky and hit this western wall. It would just be brutal hot over here. So in this wall particularly, they did a really nice job with the architect with reducing their windows on this side. Uh, we have very few square, feetage, uh, square feet of windows. And of course, this is also a fairly busy street on the other side here. So uh, we get the double, double benefit of having some good air, uh, or pardon me, some good sound uh, attenuation between us and that street over there. And then on this side, we totally filled all these cavities with spray foam. So we're five and a half inches of depth in spray foam. And again, if you look up to the, uh, to the ceiling here, that's our ceiling rafters. We have a, uh, just a single story portion right here. We have at least five and a half inches of depth. It looks to me like the spray foam guys actually probably gave me more for my money. I'm thinking we probably have six or seven inches average depth of insulation. Look at all those pipes and wires penetrating. We've got a bunch of gas lines um, coming through that wall. And I know there's several exterior penetrations. And that spray foam just totally seals up over every one of those penetrations. Gives a perfect job every time. That's one of the things I love about it. And uh, I think I've mentioned in a previous post, this house also has, has one inch of polyiso board on top of the roof deck. So not only do we have at least five and a half inches or really more of spray foam on the roof, we have that extra full one inch that covers over top of all of our rafters with no thermal bridging in that, in that place. So I think this house is going to be very efficient. Two other things I wanted to show you about spray foam. We've got a uh, refrigerator uh, ice maker line here. And you can see this, this is just a really tough detail if you were trying to insulate this with a traditional bat or even with a blown-in fiberglass. There's electrical outlets in here. There's a gas line uh, shutoff valve here and then a gas line for the range here and some really thick electric wires. And this spray foam just gives a perfect bat every time. It's a, it's a great product. 
and uh, it fully air seals. It gives you the full uh, stated R value of the wall, and it's not dependent on a perfect install. So it really, it, it has so many great qualities. If you're building or remodeling in the next couple of years, please consider this uh, as a best practice way to insulate your house and get a couple bids. It's very competitive these days. Uh, you may find that it's not nearly as expensive as what you once thought it was going to be to uh, insulate your house with spray foam. This is an open cell uh, product here in Austin, Texas. We traditionally run at least three and a half inches in our walls, five and a half inches in our roof cavities, and it makes for a, an incredible, um, incredible insulation system. And the other big benefit that I, I didn't even talk about really today was making a conditioned attic space. So now all our duct work that's running up in our attic on this house is fully within the condition envelope of the house. So now our attic temperature in this house will be probably within about five degrees of what the uh, temperature is in this um, kind of living space in the house compared to an attic in Austin that's insulated traditionally with a blown in fiberglass that might be 130, 140 degrees in the summertime. Ours is probably gonna be, you know, let's say 82 or 83 degrees in the attic. So we're able to calculate all that when we, um, when we decide what our duct work and our sizing on our ACs are gonna be when we do our manual J. And it really allows us to heat and cool the house with the proper equipment, not oversizing and not undersizing, but really giving perfect, uh, most efficient equipment for this house. Thanks for joining me, have a great day, and please consider spray foam when you're doing your project.